John Critchley Prince commenced work by his father's side at the age of nine, manufacturing reeds, a reed being a tool used by handloom weavers to separate the warp threads and to pack the weft threads tight. The son of Joseph and Nancy Prince, he was born in Wigan, Lancashire, in 1808. Born into poverty, like the vast majority of working people of his period, he was destined to live a life of poverty. His only formal education was a short period attending a Baptist Sunday school. But, once having learned to read, he taught himself to write. To cut a long story short, he became a poet, and one of those noted Lancashire writers who met together at Poets' Corner, that is the Sun Inn, situated on Long Millgate in Manchester during the turbulent years of the 1840s. During this period, the fight for the Ten Hours Bill and against child labour was at its height. This poem is entitled Death of a Factory Child. It should be noted that in South East Lancashire, the word Bastille was often used to describe a workhouse or a prison. In this poem, the author uses the word to mean a cotton mill. Hear me, you firm and uncorrupted few, followers of freedom and of virtue too, ye who are pleading with a noble zeal for poor men's rights, rejoicing in their weal. Friend of the parent, guardians of the child, whose frames are wasted and whose souls defiled, within these halls of tyranny which stand, gloomy and vast, o'er all the stinking land. Too long my harp hath breathed of fancy's dreams, Too long responded to unworthy themes. Farewell, ye once-loved fictions of my youth, Its future tongues shall harmonise with truth. To rouse the labourer in peril's hour, To cheer the victims of a lawless power, To wake that slumbering energy of soul, Which brutes no wrong, and spurns unjust control. To add my feeble voice to that which rings With awful thunder in the ear of kings. This is my hourly hope, my daily aim. If virtuous men approve, I seek no higher fame. The long drear winter night was gathering fast, The snow danced wildly on the fitful blast. Within yon Bastille's suffocating walls, whose very name my sickening soul appalls. The gas which burns to light these living graves gleamed on the faces of a thousand slaves. I saw and knew one gentle victim there, the youngest of a widowed mother's care. Hard had he laboured since the morning hour, but now his little hands relaxed their power. Yet urged by curses or severer blows, Without one moment's brief but sweet repose, From frame to frame the exhausted sufferer crept, Pieced the frail threads, and, uncomplaining, wept. While yet the night was boisterous and chill, While winds were loud and snows were drifting still, the bell gave out its long-expected sound. The mighty engine ceased its weary round. Forth rushed the captives, a degraded train, Till morn should summon them to toil again. Some to the maddening ale-cup rashly sped, Some to the short oblivion of their bed. But he whose tale is woven in my song, The first to fall, of that devoted throng. With mingled cold and pain, his tears ran o'er, as the keen ice wind entered every pore. I asked his ailment, but he did not speak. His fate was written on his ghastly cheek. I strove to help him with a friendly hand. Alas, poor boy, he could not walk or stand. I clasped my arms around his wasted form, and boring through the fury of the storm, Up the dark street my eager footsteps bent, Cursing the powers that doomed him as I went. His mother met me 
with unfeigned alarms, and snatched the slaughtered victim from my arms, kissed his pale lips, and called upon his name. He murmured faintly, but no answer came. I turned in grief from her imploring cries, unbidden tears were springing in my eyes. Yet breathing words of hope, I sought my home, to ponder upon miseries to come. The wondrous wizard sleep had now unfurled His drowsy pennons over half the world. The widow's children to their beds were gone, And left her calm, yet mournfully alone. Alone with him, the idol of her heart, Whose sinless soul was yearning to depart. She, mute at length with sorrow and dismay, Wept o'er his shattered frame the night away. Time was, ere commerce sealed his early doom, Shut up in Moloch's life-destroying womb, Ere yet the roses of his cheeks were pale, He ran uncurbed o'er mountain moor and vale. Lured by the eyes of bees, the voice of birds, Sweet and familiar as his mother's words, With buoyant step he sallied forth at morn, And plucked his hasty dinner from the thorn, he knew each sylvan and sequestered nook, He watched the secret mazes of the brook, Thread the dark forest, roam the laughing fields, Decked with each golden bud that summer yields. The same, though changeful nature, frowned or smiled, A healthful, innocent, and joyous child. Thus in the mourners Harris' mind were glassed, These sad, yet sweet, reflections of the past, until these thrilling words her vision broke. Mother dear, mother, t'was her boy who spoke. With fevered lips he asked the cooling draught, And long and deeply from the cup he quaffed. But scarcely had he turned his head to rest, Fondly secure upon his mother's breast, A sound which woke no feeling but of fear, with well-known import smote his startled ear, A sound, alas, which proved his dying now, The horrid clangour of the Bastille bell. Then starting up he gazed on vacant space, Cried as he listened with bewildered face, O oh, mother, mother, I can work no more, My head is painful and my feet are sore, Forgive me, mother, if I thus complain, I fear I never shall be well again. And if I die, oh, do not weep for me, But make my grave beneath some pleasant tree, Where summer flowers around its roots may spring, And summer birds within its branches sing. And tell my loving sisters when they weep, I saw my gentle father in my sleep. And as he kindly looked and sweetly smiled, I thought he called me his own happy child. The sufferer spake his last, his eyes grew dim, The cruel spoiler palsied every limb. One sigh before the victory was won, One gentle tremor, and the strife was done. Whilst the glad spirit, freed from chains of clay, Soared to her native realms away, away, my painful task is drawing to a close, I would not dwell upon a parent's woes. She mourned for him as mothers always mourn, Yet did not seem to wish for his return. She laid him in the earth with decent pride, For poor men's charity the means supplied, And one poor bard, to whom the child was known, Inscribed these lines upon his humble stone. Epitaph here sleep the relics of an orphan flower, Crushed by the brutal boot of lawless power, Another victim to the thousands slain, Within the mighty slaughterhouse of gain. O oh, come, ye kind philanthropists, Who feel the noblest interests in the people's will, Pause on this infant martyr's new-turned grave, Swear to emancipate the British slave, Tell the oppressor that the widow's God 
Injustice wields an all-avenging rod, And if the powers of human virtue fail, The hand of heaven will certainly prevail.